Hey guys, today we have another video. We've got a 2008 iMac here. It has a dead hard drive, and as you can see, the computer's in great condition. Uh, it'll work great for someone. We just need to make sure we get that hard drive replaced and uh, get it up and running again. So the first step in replacing the hard drive, we're gonna have to lay the Mac face down on a table, and I usually put a towel in between it just so I don't scratch the screen or the table that I'm working on. And as you'll see, we need to remove the RAM cover door. In my other video we went through this in a little more detail, but uh, here you'll, you'll be able to see that I'm just going to unscrew it with a small Phillips head screwdriver and the plate should come right off. Next we'll take the Mac and put it back up on its stand. Now the screen of this model of iMac is held on by really strong magnets, so there's just a glass panel that covers the actual LCD that's underneath. So as you see, you want to put a suction cup there in one of the corners, and I just try to pull nice and gently so you don't drop the glass as it comes out. Now we'll lay the iMac on its back so we can remove some screws around the front bezel. Next we'll remove the screws that are holding on the bezel to the rest of the computer. These are Torx T8 screws, and there's four along the bottom, four along the top, and two along each side of the computer. As you're doing this, take special care to keep track of where these screws came from, because they are different sizes and they need to go back where they came from. Next, let's stand the computer back up. Now here's one of the more difficult parts of the hard drive replacement. We're going to have to push with our thumbs on the edge of the LCD there's a little foam strip and you're going to pull with your fingers the top of the metal bezel back and you'll see that as you pull it will slide back just a little bit and then you'll kind of push it down and it will unlatch from the bottom of the computer. Now when you're pulling off the bezel from the top of the computer be careful not to pull too far because there is a microphone cable that connects the back of the computer to the front bezel of the computer. So to remove this, I like to tilt the bezel backwards and lay it down just above the back of the, of the display. Then, with some small tools, I'll go in and I'll take off the tape that's wrapped around the connector, and then you can just pull it apart like a little Lego. Now towards the bottom right corner of the screen, you'll see a connector that connects the LCD display to the motherboard. And here on either side of this connector, there are two T6 screws so you'll just have to go in and pull those out and then you'll see there's a black tab it's like a black piece of tape you'll go ahead and pull that and it should lift off from the motherboard now we will remove the eight screws that are holding on the LCD to the back panel of the display each of these screws is a T8 screw and as you can see here there are four on each side Now if you lift up on the right side of the display, just very slightly you'll be able to see that there are four connectors between the back panel of the computer and the LCD display. Typically before I unplug these clips, I like to mark one set on each side just so I can remember which ones go together when I'm putting the display back on the computer. Now as you can see here, this is one of the more difficult parts of removing the screen from the computer. If you can have someone help you and hold the screen up while you unplug the clips, that's ideal. But if you're on your own, you can, you can typically figure out a way to do it. I would just pry the screen up and hold it open with my hand and kind of use the other hand to pull the clips apart. Towards the bottom left corner of the display, there's one last cable we need to disconnect before we can remove the display. If you lift up on the display just a little bit, you'll see where it comes off of the display and how it runs through behind the fan and plugs into the motherboard. You can simply pull on it gently and it will come out of its socket. Once you've removed the LCD panel and set it in a safe place, you'll be able to see all the internals of the computer. So as you can see here, right in the middle, we have our hard drive, which is dead. So our next task would be to remove it. 
On the hard drive, you'll see there's a foam pad holding on the temperature sensor to the hard drive. We need to remove this foam pad as well as the temperature sensor and then also remove any tape that's holding down additional wires that are routed through the computer. This part is pretty straightforward, so I'll speed it up for you. Next, you'll want to push down on the latch that's on the top of the hard drive to release it from the drive bay. Once you've got your cables routed out of the way, you can grab your drive and start to pull it out of the bay. There are two small pegs at the bottom of the drive that are in rubber slots, so they might take a little bit of extra encouragement to pull out. But they should come out fairly easily. Careful not to pull too hard, as the data and power cables for the hard drive are still connected. The best way I have found to remove these cables is to simply push them off with my fingernail. And here we have the hard drive from the iMac. These hard drives were pretty typical for the time. They're good hard drives, but because they are hard drives, they do fail. So in the top left corner here, we have our new solid state drive that we will be replacing the hard drive with. As you can see, they are very different sizes. So in the bottom right corner, I have an adapter that goes from a three and a half inch size to the two and a half inch size. So the first step is to take our two and a half inch solid state drive and put it into our drive bay adapter. Now as you'll see here, it's fairly simple to do. You'll have to take your drive and line it up with the holes in the adapter. Now this specific product came with screws that I could use to attach the drive to the bay adapter. A link to these products will be in the description. And again, because this process is fairly straightforward, we'll speed up these clips. Our next task is to remove the mounting hardware from the old hard drive and put it on the new hard drive adapter. Take careful note of where these items are in relation to the SATA data and power ports as they should be in the same orientation on the new solid state drive. These screws are a standard T8 screw that we used to remove the bezel earlier. Now I went to install the drive bay back where it needs to be and it turns out that because of the positioning of the solid state drive in the hard drive bay adapter, the cables weren't long enough. And as you see I've got them lined up here, they just don't seem to be in the right spot. So I had to think of something a little bit different in order to get this to fit. Essentially I needed the hard drive to sit in this position in the adapter. So my best guess was to fold down the tabs that were originally used to screw in the hard drive and to simply use 3M command strips to stick it to the inside of the drive cage. After securing the solid state drive to the adapter, we were able to stick it back in the computer to see if our cables would fit. This time the hard drive was in the right place and the cables were just the right length. Next we will reattach the temperature sensor to the hard drive and cover it with the foam pad that we removed earlier. There should be enough adhesive for it to stick securely again. Next, we'll replace the tape that was managing the cables around the area. After laying the computer on its back again, we'll grab the LCD panel and place it back where it was, being very careful not to pinch any of the cables that are lying underneath. Once the display is seated properly, reroute your temperature sensor cable back where it was previously and plug it back into the motherboard. 
Now, back on the right side of the display, we're going to reattach the four connections that we detached earlier. Remember, we marked these with a sharpie to make sure that we didn't forget which ones go with which pins. I found that the easiest way to do this was to prop up the screen with my hand underneath it and then to clip them together. The last connector we need to worry about for the display is the one right on the front. Make sure to line up the pins properly and you'll be able to tell that it is lined up because it will click back into place. Then replace the two T6 Torx screws on either side of the connector. Next we will replace the eight Torx screws, four on each side of the display. Next we'll lay the computer on its back again and put the front bezel like so. Next we'll connect the microphone cable like it was before. Next we'll flip the bezel back around and latch it on the bottom end of the frame of the computer. Then very carefully we'll slide it up towards the top and make sure that the top end is securely in place. Be sure to pay special attention to the microphone cable as you're pushing down the top end of the bezel. It often gets squished in between the bezel and the frame. Next we'll replace the 10 T8 screws around the bezel of the screen. Remember these come from specific places so put them back where they came from. Lastly we will place the glass cover over the LCD panel. There are magnetic pins that go into specific holes so it should fall into place fairly easily. After plugging the computer back in and booting it up, it appears that the hard drive is functional. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to drop a like down below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.